Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is a show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today we're playing Triage by the Triage team. It was released on January 11th on ModDB. It's now also on Planet Philip. So you can head over to whichever site you like and go and pick it up. Download links are in the description below this video as always. So let's head in and see what Triage is all about. Well, Matt, we're here. This is where Dad took me shooting when I was your age. If he were still around, he probably would have taken you here too. Anyway, the rifle's loaded. Pick it up and take a shot at those ducks. So this area acts as a tutorial to show us the new game mechanics. As uh, the gameplay in Triage is changed quite a bit from standard Half-Life 2 nice run and gun game. gameplay. That looks pretty badass, but it's not going to hit anything. Try aiming down the sights when you shoot. As you can see here, we've got a bit of training with a weapon and it's teaching us the aim down sight mechanics which are new for this mod. Now, the gameplay has basically changed, it's kind of a mix between Rainbow Six and Call of Duty in that you have this very tactical gameplay from Rainbow Six mixed with the regenerating health system from Call of Duty and the kind of same kind of cover shooter based mechanics. So you, you pop out and take as many shots as you can. When, when your screen turns red and you're about to die, you hop back into cover and regenerate your health. What the hell? This intro is very well presented. Uh, I think it's one of the most polished areas in the entire mod actually, it's, it's very nicely done. It sets the scene nicely, so your citizens trapped in this uh, block, and uh, you're about to get manhandled by the combine. It sets the scene very nicely. Uh, this mod is set during the time in the Half-Life 2 storyline where Gordon and Alex are trapped in these slow teleports. So the citizens are just kind of left to fend for themselves at this point. This doesn't look good. I hope they take us to a better place. One issue I do have with the intro here is that um, although there's a lot of new voice acting and for the most part it's well written, they've kind of uh, mixed these new voices in with the old Half-Life 2 voices so you get these well recorded and processed and you know fantastic sound effects from Half-Life 2's voice actors and then you get the kind of cheap microphone at home kind of effect from the new voice actors. It doesn't gel very well. Come on, Matt, we gotta go. One of the things you'll notice very quickly when you start moving around in this mod is that the strafe speed is uh, severely diminished from what it should be. Uh, I'm not really sure what the thinking behind this was, I mean, it just ends up being completely irritating. I mean, for the most part, the, uh, the aim down sight mechanics, uh, everything like this is really well implemented, it feels really good. It's very polished. Uh, the recoil patterns and all the guns feel good. The sound effects are good. They feel meaty, they do a lot of damage. The, the thinking behind lowering the strafe speed just it absolutely baffles me. So many times I've been moving around and I've just been walking into walls and all this kind of death stuff. It's, it's really bizarre. Uh, I asked about it on the ModDB page and they, they were saying that uh, the reduced strafe speed made people play more tactically and use cover more and there was less run and gun going on as a result so perhaps it's the they got the desired effect but I, th I think it's really jarring for a lot of players there's a lot of comments on their ModDB page just 
complaining about this and uh, I can see why, it's very strange. So this scene here, fighting the Combine in the streets, I'm not sure what it is, but it really reminds me of, uh, if you've seen the film Children of Men, there's a scene near the end where there's kind of this uh, kind of tower block full of rebels all firing their guns out the windows with all these soldiers in the streets below them. And, uh, this, this scene we're playing here just reminds me of that so much, it's, it's almost uncanny. Now you can probably hear um, some voice acting going on in the background. This is a major gripe I have with this mod is that uh, major kind of critical progression points are given to you by the AI NPCs over voice but you just can't hear what they're saying because the, the guns are so loud, there's so much action going on and uh, unfortunately the, uh, the recording of the voices uh, leaves a little bit to be desired just from a microphone quality standpoint. It makes it very hard to hear what they're saying half the time and uh, you just don't hear it. My first time through this mod I was fighting in this area for about, I don't know, 20 minutes and uh, <laughs> I just I just didn't know what to do because I hadn't heard any of the AI uh, voices saying like come upstairs, come upstairs. I, was, I, I even ran outside and was like trying to push the combine back into their force fields for about five minutes. That didn't work either. You really do have to listen to what the uh, voices are saying otherwise you just won't have a clue what to do. A bit of a lull in the combat there, so you can actually hear what he's saying. There's a couple of nagging issues with the AI as well. It happens in a couple of maps. They'll, they'll walk backwards. They'll kind of stop in the middle of a, you know, a corridor that you can't get past them. There's a couple of issues like this. So yeah, going back to the new kind of aim down sight mechanics and everything, like I was mentioning, they're very polished, very well implemented. Whether of course you like this kind of system and uh, whether, whether you agree with it being in a Half-Life 2 mod is obviously that's personal preference. Me, myself, I generally dislike this kind of gameplay in Half-Life because I really prefer the kind of old school run and gun gameplay that Half-Life provides. Again, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, if you do like this kind of aim down sight tactical gameplay then it's very well implemented here and I'm sure you'll enjoy this quite a lot. So if you're listening closely, you might have heard the guy say, like, meet me at the top there. And, uh, this is another area where it took me a while to figure out what to do uh, my first time through here. Is you, you just, the helicopter's firing at you, you've got people firing at you from the street, and you just can't hear him tell you to go upstairs. I mean, I'd, I'd almost think that because it's, like, critical progression that you have to do what these AIs are saying, otherwise you just can't progress in the map. It's almost at the point where it might even be better to have like an on-screen prompt as well saying go to the top of the stairs. Because I was, I was literally playing this intro for about 20-25 minutes the first time through just shooting guys over and over and over and not having a clue what to do. It just never ends until you do what the AI says. Reminds me a lot of Call of Duty actually, where you can just sit in an area mowing down guys for hours and until you go past the magical trigger to trigger the next part of the map. Uh, yeah, you're just stuck there. So this helicopter fight is quite fun, although it does look very, very strange with the helicopter being so close to the ground and the other buildings. And uh, you notice here when it gets destroyed, it just kind of. Kind of <laughs> bumbles around on the ceiling of the house for a while. It's yeah, it's a bit strange. It needs a lot more room I think to move around. Over there. Take your crew through the alley. You'll be there in no time. We got you back. See you there. 
Yeah, the, the voice acting quality does does kind of fluctuate quite a lot. Most of it's okay. There's a couple of lines which are just absolutely cringeworthy, unfortunately. The main problem with with it really is just the uh, the recording quality. But again, you can't expect everyone to have you know 500 pound microphones. They've done the best they can with the tools they have, I guess. Now the level design itself, for the most part, is extremely linear. Uh, it does follow a kind of Call of Duty style model where uh, there's not really a lot of choice to be had. You just kind of fight in the areas you have. There's no real kind of like flanking routes or anything like that. It's generally kind of corridors with enemies at the end of them for the most part. And the levels could really do with a lot more detail as well. A lot of these buildings are kind of very, very much just kind of cubes thrown down, with textures on them. There's a little bit of detail. I mean, it, it's possible. It's not ugly or anything like that, but it's it's just extremely obvious in a lot of areas that a uh, a lot more detail could be had. Uh, for instance, this building in front of us right here. You can tell it's just it's just a cube. It really could use some uh, extra detail and props and various other details to break up the silhouettes of these buildings. So although the level design is very simple from a gameplay perspective, uh, generally, like I mentioned before, it's kind of a shooting gallery style thing, uh, there are some fairly interesting uh, fights to be had though. For instance, here we're in a kind of running battle with the Combine. So we keep on getting forced back by troops. Um, if you stick around to kind of learn how it's set up, basically you just have like an infinite respawn of Metro Cops that keep uh, spawning closer and closer to you as you get pushed back. So. It creates a nice effect of uh, being pushed back by the Combine through the street battle. It is perhaps a bit transparent in how it works, but uh, it produces a nice atmosphere of actually getting your ass kicked and having to retreat. There are a couple of nice, uh, nice combat areas in this mod actually, I'll we'll talk more about them as we come to them. But uh, there are a couple of areas which are, are incredibly frustrating as well. I think my main gripe overall with the combat is just uh, the, the linearity of the level design in these combat areas. There's literally one way to go and fight. There's no, like I mentioned, there's no flanking routes. There's no real choice to be had in how you, how you attack these guys. You just find the nearest bit of cover and uh, hope for the best. Hey Matthew, that's your name right Matthew. You passed out a while ago. We moved your friends to a safer place, but we heard how well you handled things back there and we hoped you'd join us. We lost a lot of good people and we could definitely use your help. Break open the box on the table, you'll find a radio and some ammo. We'll head out soon afterwards. So this is an another area I have a few gripes with. You notice there she says, uh, break open the box on the table and uh, pick up your weapons and items. Now, I think it's reasonable to assume that any Half-Life player that sees a crate like this will uh, immediately look for something to break it with, i.e. grabbing a crowbar or finding an object to destroy it with or something like that. It's just kind of second nature to Half-Life players. Uh, this mod kind of breaks this rule of uh, visual language in Half-Life games. So all you have to do is walk up to it and use it and it literally breaks apart and you get your stuff. It just feels extremely unnatural to me that that is the case. Uh, I would have preferred it if there was... It's just, the simple fix is just put the crowbar on top of the crate. Or put the crowbar, perhaps you have to explore a bit to find the crowbar. Our objectives are to get there and bring anyone else we find. You heard the man. Let's move it. Yeah, not really a fan of that. It could have been done a lot better, I feel. This area feels a little strange as well. So your guys are moving out. They generally take their sweet time. And uh, you end up this kind of funny kind of parade down the street of watching your guys. I've got some uh, moonwalkers going on here as well. It's yeah, it's a bit bizarre. Some some of the AI issues are uh, interesting to say the least. Take 
positions behind the cars. Keep your eyes on the windows. So we've got some nice pacing here. I love the way it's quiet and then all of a sudden it's just all hell breaks loose. Uh, it's a nice effect. Unfortunately again here it's just another linear path forwards. There's no there's no real flanking routes or anything. And then this little alcove here, um, it would have been nice to turn on my torch, but you don't have one in this mod for some inexplicable reason. They've removed the ability to... Uh, you cannot zoom and you cannot use a torch. I have no idea why. It seems almost arbitrary mods these days. Like, we want it to be different. I'm just going to arbitrarily remove uh, an item from the player for absolutely no reason. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. The main reason I bring it up is because there's a lot of really dark areas later on in this, in part one of Triage, and it, it's literally almost impossible to see where to go without a torch. I think it was just blind luck that I stumbled my way forwards in a couple of these areas and found the way through. Yeah, it's, it's a real problem. I mean, if you're going to take the torch away from the player, then you need to make sure that they don't actually need one in your maps. Unfortunately, here you do in quite a few cases. Can you hear me? I hear you, Matthew. We'll be there soon. Squad, hold your ground! Someone, grab grenades and take out that APC! That APC's got us in! Take it out with grenades! Use the grenades and take the APC out! I do think the kind of wounded effect lasts a bit too long as well. It's quite irritating to kind of pop out around the corner, eat a bunch of lead from a load of combine, and, uh, and then you're basically stuck behind cover doing absolutely nothing for about 10 seconds or something. It feels really long and arduous. I think it could even be half the time it is now and it would still be okay. So you notice here there's also a two weapon system in the in the game, so you can only carry uh, one pistol and one primary weapon at a time. I actually don't mind this too much, although I really enjoy kind of old school shooters as you guys know where you can just carry absolutely everything at once. I think it adds a lot of uh, variety to the gameplay as you have so many more tools at your disposal at one time. But uh, a two weapon system does create some interesting choices for the player. Of course, the real issue is, uh, is it is it enough of an interesting choice with the different weapons you have available there? In this mod, there's not really a lot of difference between all the assault rifles. I mean, the, the real choice is, do you want a, a shotgun or an assault rifle? There's not really much difference between all the rifles, unfortunately. In fact, the, the AR, as you're seeing here, the iron sights are absolutely shocking. I mean, they work, they're accurate, but you, you can't see anything in your screen while you're aiming with this thing. It's it's impossible to use, almost. And I'm dead. So let's try that one again, shall we? So here's a perfect example of an area that could have really used a flanking route because as soon as you walk in that area you just get absolutely riddled with bullets and uh, on my first time through I I was literally looking around here for a uh, an alternate path through that perhaps get the jump on them from uh, above in a window or something. Uh, although you do kind of get rewarded with a magnum, uh, there's, like I mentioned before the level design is incredibly linear so there's no actual other path to use. You have to. You have to go straight into enemy fire.
Now, a member of the uh, triage team on Mod ModDB was telling me that uh, if you fire in the direction of the Combine or if you wound or kill uh, a Combine soldier near other soldiers, they will actually take cover and stop firing at you for a little while. Uh, I had no idea about this mechanic uh, until he had told me. It's, it's a good mechanic, uh, I just think it needs to be more obvious and uh, explained to players a bit more than it is currently. I mean, I didn't even try to do anything like that because I had no idea the mechanic even existed. I only found out about it after I'd finished my first playthrough and left my feedback on the ModDB page. Um, yeah, again, it's a good system, but if you don't tell the player about it, and it's it's not really shown enough, Sorry. it doesn't really come naturally to me either, just shooting in the general direction of Combine rather than shooting at them. There's some weirdness here, that this path feels very unnatural going over the top there. Alright, I'll be back in part two.